Hello and welcome to the video for After Effects Week 16, Wednesday. So, we have a couple tutorials for you guys to check out. Um, these tutorials are like the second tutorial that I asked you to do on Monday where there's not really videos for these. There's more like um, articles that explain what it is you're supposed to do. Um, of course, they give you the files to download. And then they go through the process of explaining how to go ahead and make this effect. It's a pretty cool uh, grungy effect there. And then the second one is uh, also very fun. It's They also give you files to download right here. And then uh, they have you make a kaleidoscope effect, which is pretty cool. Okay, so uh, please do those tutorials. They're fun and they're pretty quick and you'll learn some cool things. Um, now, as far as what we're going to work on in After Effects today. Um, I'm continuing to use my little uh, song video here as an example and do different types of techniques with After Effects. So uh, today what I'm going to do is take a 3D object and um, bring it into After Effects and just kind of rotate it around. And of course for my 3D object I'm going to use a piece symbol because that makes sense with the, uh, the project that I'm doing here. So now I don't uh, I, I do know a little bit about 3D, but I you know I'm not going to create a 3D object from scratch. Uh, instead, I'm going to go to a website that has these available, and uh, you can click on this link right here to get directly to the piece symbol that I used. Um, but let me also show you this site. I'll go back. I'll go to the main page here, which is Thingiverse. Um, so Thingiverse is a website that was put up by MakerBot, which is one of the uh, premier makers of 3D printers, home 3D printers, and I'm sure they make professional business 3D printers too. But you can go here and you can uh, get existing 3D models and then print them out on your printers. Uh, you have to read the licensing to see you know, if it's free, completely you know, open source, or if it's... Uh, if you have to give people credit or maybe even a little payment or whatever. But uh, so you can go in here and you can type in whatever you want. Uh, so I am going to put in peace symbol. And you can see the different uh, ones that come up here. And I'm just looking for something that I can rotate around. So uh, this would have been a good one. I probably should have gotten this one, but I didn't. The reason is because this looks like it's the same width all the way around. I actually ended up getting this one which turned out to be a little problematic because uh, I didn't realize it just looking at this, but this is thinner at the top and then gets fatter at the bottom. And you'll see in a second that makes it look a little wobbly when it rotates around. So if I were to do this again, I would probably go back and get, get this bad boy here. Um, but anyway, this is what I linked to this piece symbol. And in order to get this, you simply have to click uh, download all files. And then right here, they tell you what the license is. Um, Let's see, Peace Symbol is licensed under the Creative Commons Public Domain Dedication License. So, Dedication License. So, let's see what the Dedication License is. Uh, so, it says, Universal Public Domain Dedication. This person who associated work with this deed has dedicated the work to the public domain by waiving all of his or her rights to the work worldwide under copyright law. Uh, you can... Ba 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 ba. See other information below. Other information. Da, 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 da. Okay. So basically, it's completely free. Uh, but if you want to, you can donate and other things like that. Um, okay. Cool. So um, anyway, I clicked the download and it downloaded the file. Uh, let me see if I can move this up a little bit. And then here you go. Uh, the piece symbol. It is a zipped folder. Uh, if I open it up. Uh, you can see we'll open it here and then there's some images and some files and stuff like that and basically what we end up with is this file which is called an STL file it's a 3d format right now um, in order to get 3d files into After Effects uh, you can import some 3d file formats but one of the easiest ways to do it is to use a program sort of a helper program that comes with After Effects called Maxon Cinema 4D Lite. Um, now you can use Maxon Cinema 4D Lite with After Effects. It actually comes, it installs with After Effects, but then you have to 
basically get a free account with these people uh, in order to use it. Um, now, I just went through the process of signing up for my, you know, free account. Um, and so I can sort of show you what that looks like. Okay, so first of all, as I said, there's a sign-up process that's involved with uh, getting the Maxon Cinema 4D to work. And I just went through it, so it's not going to give me all the prompts again. But basically, you would go into After Effects, and you would say, File, New, uh, Maxon, Maxon Cinema 4D File. And then you would go somewhere where you want to save this file. Basically, we're making a new blank file for Maxon Cinema 4D so we can import that piece symbol in. So I'm just going to call this one test.cinema4d and hit save, right? Okay. Now, uh, let's see. It says your preferences are you use Cinema 4D Lite. And then, uh, you know, it's asking if you want to sign up for the full-blown program. I'm going to say do not show again, and I'm going to say no, right? Now, in my case, it's just going to go ahead and launch the program. But what you guys are going to see is a the first time you try to use it, is it's going to bring up a screen that says, hey, you need to register with Maxon Cinema 4D um, before you can use this program. And you do have to go through the process of, you know, filling out your name and email address and then hitting the submit button. And then what will happen is they'll send you an email verification. Once you verify that email, then you can hit continue and it will take you into your account where you can activate the Cinema 4D license. So uh, let me see. I have I had a screen uh, up just a second ago that had some of those things on it. So let me see if I can find it. I'm gonna go back to my browser here and let me let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. Well, here's one thing that I found, which is um, you know after this form comes up, it's gonna be pretty obvious. It's gonna ask you to fill it out, email address and name and password, and then once you hit submit, it's gonna send you an email. Now, unfortunately, the email uh, can sometimes end up in the spam folder. That's where mine did. Uh, and it didn't even say Maxon in the subject uh, uh, form here, the subject field. It just said, validate your email to complete your registration, which could easily have been any company, including a fake company. So, But I saw that it was from noreply at maxon.net. So I, I, I opened it up from my spam folder, clicked validate email, and it validated my email. Now, right over here in this tab here, this is what the email, uh, this is the form that comes up, basically, uh, that, that they have you fill out. Uh, or uh, It's not exactly this form, but it's pretty darn close to it. And you fill this out and hit submit, and then you go through that verification process. Now, once you do that, uh, you'll be able to, uh, to log in to basically your Maxon account, right? And then um, if you go in here into the licenses section, um, there's going to be... The page looked, looked a little different than this to me when I first saw it. But there was something that said Cinema 4D Lite on the left-hand side like this. And then on the right-hand side, it had an activate button. It looked a little different than this page here. But basically, to get Cinema 4D Lite to work, you're going to have to log into your Maxon account like this and then just click activate. And then uh, it, it should work for you. Okay, so then when you uh, do something like I did in After Effects where you just tell it, you know, new uh, Cinema 4D Lite file and everything, what it will do is it will just open the program for you. Now, the program looks like this. It is a, you know, uh, sort of a bare bones, not really bare bones because it has all this functionality, but it is a, um, a basically a, a basic 3D program where you can create 3D objects and manipulate them. And so once you've, you know, opened... Cinema 4D like this, you've, you've gone through all the sign-up process and everything and gotten here. Then you can open your STL file, which is the P symbol, which um, is what we saved on the computer a little earlier. So if I go file, uh, open project, and then I go down here, and here's the P sign angle uh, dot STL. If I open that up, uh, it's going to ask me what, how big I want it. I think when I opened this the first time, it said one centimeter or whatever, and I just changed it to three inches, and I hit OK. And so what happens is you get your piece symbol, and it comes in upside down like this. Now, this might be uh, a little scary for some of you guys because you don't know this program or you don't know 3D, but we're not going to do anything in here very much. We're just going to turn this thing around and rotate it, and it's not hard to do. 
um, if you click on this uh, rotation thing here, then you get this little ball, which allows you to rotate things. And each one of these colors, red, green, and blue, rotate uh, a different way. And so this one rotates, uh, you know, around like that. And so if you do that around until you get to zero, uh, basically you have turned your P symbol upside down, right? Um, okay, so now that we've got that, uh, we can proceed to do the next step. Now, all I want to do in this simple exercise is take this P symbol and have it kind of rotate around, uh, you know, this sort of central axis and just, just have it keep rotating and then just bring that into uh, Adobe After Effects so I can put that in as a background or something, right? So, uh, fortunately, there's a really great tutorial out there which tells you exactly how to do that. Very short video tutorial. It tells you how to rotate an object in Cinema 4D. Now, in their case, they're using a little cube. And I'm going to point you to the tutorial in a second. Uh, and you can use a cube if you want, or you can bring in this P symbol if you like. But uh, let me go to where that tutorial is. Uh, so that would be, oh, there's so many links up here. I may never find it. Let's see. Uh, that's not it. Um, all right. I guess I just have to go back. Oh, here it is. Um, so right here, this link right here, make an object rotate forever in uh, 3D. It's a really good short video. You actually only need to go up to about 6 minutes and 15 seconds. It's about 9 minutes or long, but you only need to go from the beginning to about 6 minutes and 15 seconds, and he'll show you how to rotate a cube, and you can use that same information to rotate um, your uh, your P symbol, the P symbol if you want. Um, Okay, now I need to get into, uh, this is not the interface you first see when you open up this piece symbol. I've got my animation timeline open down here. And so let me make a change to this so that it goes back to sort of the original default interface. So the, um, the layout that I'm in right now is called the animation layout. And it gives you this big animation timeline down here. But the one that you see when you first open it is called startup. And this is what you guys are probably looking at right now if you brought the P symbol in. So uh, this is the startup. And, uh, you know, I recommend that you, at this point, if you brought the P symbol in, or if you didn't and you, you know, you went through all the steps, you signed up for Maxon, you got Cinema 4D open. You know, at this point, you have the choice to download that P symbol and then import it in here and rotate it. Or you can just uh, click on the link to the video from the website and rotate a uh, just a cube if you want, whichever you know floats your boat. But the process is pretty simple. And I'll just show it to you, but you should watch the video because he's really good at this. But uh, basically, you just this is your animation timeline down here, and you come over here and you click uh, to create a keyframe with the uh, the piece symbol at you know the zero angle. This is you know rotating around the center, right? Then you grab this playback head and you move it all the way down to the end. Uh, I think this is about three seconds. And then you come over here and you change this to 360 degrees. Okay. And then you create a new uh, keyframe there, right? And so what happens is during that course of three seconds or whatever, the piece symbol rotates around. Now, what you'll notice, what I didn't realize until I downloaded it, see this is what I'm talking about it's thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom so it has kind of a weird wobbly rotation which I'm not crazy about but that's okay it's good for demoing and like I said there was that other piece symbol I saw in there which I can go grab if I want to make a sort of a cleaner animation now um, if you hit your play button on this you can watch the rotation occur like I said it's kind of funky and weird um, but you can also see that it has a sort of an easing in and an easing out. So it starts out slow, speeds up, and then slows down again. So in the video, he'll show you how to uh, go ahead and change that to a more linear uh, type of animation and also how to do repetitions. And uh, the way to do that, if we go into the animation timeline here, you can twirl open your uh, piece symbol rotation and then twirl open the rotation uh, here. And then what happens is it shows you um, it shows you the sort of the easing in and the easing out process, um, but also it, this is just looping basically one time. And if you want it to go many many times, you can click on this after button here and just do repeat, 
and then you can put the number of repetitions in. So you could put a really high number, like a thousand. And then what's going to happen is, you know, when you hit the play button, it's going to create a lot of repetitions over here and it's going to keep going. It's going to keep rotating. But of course, it's still doing the speeding up and slowing down, which is kind of annoying, right? So, um, and the reason it's doing that is because the easing, which is triggered down here, right? So if you click on this and then you come up here and uh, you roll over these little buttons here, as you roll over them, each one pops up with a different choice. Um, and he'll explain this in the video. But uh, if you click on this one called linear, what it does is it makes a straight line. So it's a, it's a straight acceleration instead of a slowdown and speed up. So now if you go back to the beginning here and hit your play button, now the, uh, the object is rotating at a regular speed. Okay, and it's doing it at, you know, a, a thousand times. So it's going to go for quite a while. So, you know, once you get the desired effect that you want in here, you can save this and bring it into um, After Effects. Now, of course, this uh, program, there's support online for it. There's videos. Um, uh, is really, really uh, powerful. You can do things like put different materials on here. You could put shiny materials or textures you can drop out this background. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so it would be interesting if you're interested in this to uh, look into it and find out more information. But let me just go ahead and save this. Um, so I'll just call this uh, peace sign. And I'm just going to put in capital letters here, rotate cinema 4D save. Right. Okay. Now if I go back into After Effects here, here's my project. Uh, I can go file, uh, import file and I can click on this peace sign rotate and when I bring it in I can choose to create a composition for just that and so I'll do that and hit open and then um, it's bringing in the the project uh, it wants me to turn off my cap symbol here um, and there it is and it brings in the cinema 4d interface here as well and if I hit my play button it's going to start out slow because it has to sort of render it here in After Effects. And then after it's done one complete round of rendering, it'll start to loop and it'll go at a more normal speed, right? And of course, keep in mind that we're, once again, looking at this at, at quarter resolution to speed things up. If we looked at things at full resolution, uh, I don't know if it's going to have to re, oh yeah, it's going to have to re-render that, which is going to take a second here. Um, but it'll be worth it because it'll, it'll look really good. But, you know, obviously I could go back into, um, cinema 4d and turn off that little grid there. Um, and of course in there, in that program, I could color this and do any extra special stuff I want to it. But then once it's done, you know, I bring it in here and I'm golden. I've got my rotating piece symbol, which I could put in the background of my movie. Right. So there you have it. Okay, so um, just a little fun exercise in 3D that, that you guys can do that will hopefully inspire you to use some of these things. Remember, there's a whole universe of 3D objects that are free out there on Thingiverse that you can use even if you don't know how to make them. And Cinema 4D is pretty easy to use. There's a lot of tutorials for it out there. And once you've made something, you can import it in here. You can always go back, jump back into Cinema 4D and make changes, and then it will update in here. So it's really, uh, it's, a, it's a nice one-two punch with Cinema 4D Lite and um, After Effects. And of course, if you really love the, the 3D, you can upgrade to the professional version and have even more uh, cool things that you can do in there. Okay, so let's go back here. So um, that's what we're doing today, the, uh, the tutorials. And then we rotated this 3D piece symbol, which you can, of course, rotate a cube like he does in the video. Here's the link to the piece symbol. Here's the link to the video that tells you how to rotate the cube. And then of course I explained to you how to set up your Maxon account. Um, you know, make sure that after you sign up for it, that you go find the verification email, which may be in your spam folder, click on that. And then once you get into your account, you have to find where it says licenses and click activate next to cinema 4d. And then, you'll be able to use Cinema 4D with After Effects. You won't have to do that again. Um, so have fun with this. And uh, if you make some cool uh, 3D objects, you know, uh, put them in your folder and send me a link to them. I'd love to see them and, and share them with the rest of the class.
Okay, uh, and of course, don't forget uh, to work on Project 3, which is due on May 6th, and uh, to finish off your chapters in the book. All right, so have fun with this, and have a good weekend, and I will talk to you again on Monday.